Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a special doll I made for my Patreon group collaboration. A few months ago my patrons and I voted on a theme and we came up with Monster Mash. Special thank you to all my patrons. Even those who weren't able to participate, we all had fun with the planning, so it was a very enjoyable process. Each of us came up with our own unique monster, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video where I show each of the dolls that were made as well as the information on where you can find more of the work of the artists who made them. So for my doll, I decided to do a little spin on the Bride of Frank Frankenstein, which is one of my favorite monster characters. I started out with a general idea of what I wanted to achieve, and I knew I wanted to make a Bride of Frankenstein, and for her to be pink, and that I wanted to put some green in her face. So I started with a Gigi Grant and rooted her with some alpaca yarn in pink. Prior to this uh, rooting, you could see that I was doing a little bit of carving to the face. I wanted to take down that lip a little bit and have it less of a, of a kissy kind of face and more of just an innocent, uh, normal, sh or I guess a uh, natural shaped lip. So I'm adding some tacky glue after I've rooted her to make sure those pieces stay put and just leaving that overnight to dry. I went back later and added some pink, uh, darker pink for the side pieces, like the Frankenst uh, Bride of Frankenstein side pieces. To make the costume, I just curated a few, uh, well, as many different kinds of pinks of fabric and trims and some green as well. Uh, that I thought I might use and just pull that together and just kind of use that as my uh, just stash to, to use to put together the costume and I kind of played it all by ear. I started out with a base of a corset with this stretchy very pale pink vinyl. And this is a corset that I like to use with a lot of my dolls. At, usually when I'm just kind of trying to put together a, a doll, I'll start with the corset as a base and just kind of work from there. And so I don't really use a pattern. I just kind of cut these triangles out of the rectangle piece and then I will sew those up and then it gives her more of a fitted shape. So there you can see it kind of fits her a little bit better around the waist. Then I just add some snaps to the back. So again that's just the base so to jazz up the corset I added some of this pale pink tool and I kind of pleated it up so it, uh, or uh, ruched it up so it looks like it's kind of wrapped around her. Kind of a, an homage to the actual Bride of Frankenstein costume where she has like wraps around her arms. And then when I ended it, I uh, ended up at the end of the ruching, I had these little pieces that came out the sides and I kind of liked them so I decided to leave those there. And I was kind of leaning towards doing a uh, the sort of 18th century or, or f you know, like French Parisian Marie Antoinette style that I like to do on a lot of my dolls. So I was kind of going towards that or uh, kind of planning to get to something like that. So those pieces on the side really lent itself well to that look. So I stuck with that and then I got this trim, uh, this pale pink trim and added it around the waist in sort of a wrap pattern and that's also you know sort of mimicking the the look on the actual Bride of Frankenstein's arms. And then I tattered up the pieces on the side a little bit more just distressed them a little bit by by cutting them and tugging on the tool and then added a few different pieces of trims and lace just to add some sass to the sides. <laughs> Just on one side though, just to give it, make it a little more interesting. Then I used some stretchy pink lace 
and made some thigh-high stockings. And I was happy with that, uh, except I wanted to add a little bit of something to the arms, so I, uh, I, I decided to add these pieces of vinyl that I stitched up and added and attached to the corset to give her sort of a cap sleeve, but in a uh, sh real uh, like a uh, triangle shape or uh, to give her some pointy shoulders. Kind of give her that structure that the character has. I forgot to mention that I did make her a pair of little booty shorts that I attached the stockings to with some uh, sort of a, a cording and added a little metal detail to look like they were clipped onto the thigh-high pantyhose. The shorts are a pattern that I use quite a bit and I believe it's included with my uh, in the library of rewards in my patreon page for my patrons who are at the one of the mid tiers uh, i gave a, a selection of patterns and i believe that's one of them so to start on the face up i started on the eyes like i usually do giving some white uh, kind of a white base to shape them but then i also traced around the face to where i wanted to add some stitching i wanted to give some a green sort of look to the face and uh, so I wanted to kind of sketch out where that was going to be. So here I'm adding some white pan pastel and that's just so I can have a nice base for where I want to add the green to her face. If I were to just add the green directly onto the pink it would sort of muddy it up, sort of you know color theory reasons, uh, the combining of the, the pale red with a green would kind of change the, would c create its own color and we just, I want to create a, a just a canvas like a blank canvas to add the green on so it doesn't blend in with the pink and instead is it standalone on its own. So that's why I'm adding that that white. If you're interested in some step-by-step -step, uh, close-up uh, processes, uh, videos, uh, kind of tutorials and related to how I do my face-ups or my business process and things like that, check out my Patreon. I have a number of tiers that are set up for those who are looking to learn how to uh, do, uh, do face-ups and doll customization. I have a library of uh, rewards so you can kind of see what I have to offer there. So that link is in the description box below. I also have classes on Skillshare. Um, so Skillshare is a platform where you can take creative classes that are formatted in like short, easy to follow lessons and they're work at your own pace. And I have two classes up at the moment and one of them is a step-by-step face-up process and the other is doll hair rerouting with yarn. Both are beginner classes and they cover everything you need to know to create your own reroute with yarn and to do a beginner face-up. 
It includes like supplies, techniques, and tips. Um, so if you sign up through through the link, the Skill Skillshare link in my description box below, you will receive two free months of Skillshare with no obligation to continue. I've been enjoying Skillshare any chance I get by taking classes. They have things like um, they have biz even business classes like branding or um, how to how to be an artist or uh, have a business as an artist. They have uh, watercolor painting, which I really enjoy, uh, gouache and, and acrylic, all those kinds of classes. And they also have things like color theory and things that have really helped me level up my craft with, with doll customizing. So I highly recommend that you check out Skillshare. Like I said, the link is in below, two free months, no obligation. And my two classes are on there. So now I've shaped the lips with some pan pastel. I kind of made a custom mix with some different pinks and reds. And then I shaped it out with the Derwent watercolor pencils and added some white to them to, and blended it out with a Q-tip. And then I'm using my Faber-Castell Aquarell or Art Grip uh, to do the, the little black lines in the corners of the mouth. The supplies I use are in the description box below. There's also an Amazon link. Um, if you purchase anything from that link, I do get a small uh, commission from those purchases. But either way, the link is below and it has, um, they have the neat, a neat thing where you have a storefront and it has all of the supplies that you use and you're able, I, I'm, I was able to go in and, and put information as to how I use those products. And I need to go in and keep it updated because I have changed some of the supplies that I use, but my basic supplies are in there. And hopefully I'll have an opportunity soon to go in and add some of the new things that I use since I started that. But it should be valuable, especially to somebody who's just trying to learn. I like to go in with an X-Acto knife if I have some, even like a line that I need to erase, but if it's very small, rather than go in and erase everything around it as well as the line, it's sometimes easier to go in and just kind of lift it with an X-Acto knife. So from here, I'm just adding more and more layers. One thing I find when doing face-ups, it's, um, I kind of just when you think you're done maybe push it a little bit further and then it helps it look a little bit better so i just i, I don't stop until i'm 100 percent happy with it and then i take a look at it and then i may go back and do some more it really just takes patience so i add lots of details and lots of layers Also, I want to mention before we get to the end where you'll see all of the dolls of the creators who are my patrons who join this collaboration as well as their information. Before we get to that, I don't want to talk over that, so I'll mention now um, that this doll is available for purchase. She is on pre-sale right now, meaning if you're interested, you can email me at scuriosities at gmail.com or connect with me on social media directly. And um, once I have the opportunity this week, then I'll put her in the Etsy shop. I just have to find the time to, to put her in the shop. So, but she is available before I put her in Etsy. Um, and also make sure to check out my Etsy shop because there are a couple of dolls I just heavily discounted. And there's also my new collection, Laboratory Escape. I have two of those dolls remaining at the time I'm recording this video, so check those out. That's my new collection. And check out my previous video, the video I put out before this. It walks through all those dolls and all of the details. So now I'm going in with the green on top of the white and I end up adding like a couple of layers because even though I've add, added that white canvas, you can kind of see some pink through it. So it is blending a little bit. Imagine what it would look like if I put it directly on the pink. You can kind of tell from that perspective. So um, I do go back and put a couple more layers. And when I say layers, I mean I add the color and then I'll spray it with a few coats of Mr. Super Clear and then I go back and add the layers or add more color and then more super Mr. Super Clear and then more color. That's what I mean when I say layers.
I like to continuously add the white or sometimes yellow depending on the colors that I'm working with as a highlight to the forehead and nose and chin and just kind of keep doing that as I'm going through the process uh, each with each layer because it, it I want to maintain that highlight it just gives it more dimension I'm trying to create more of a gradient with the green and then I'm also adding some pink to that green to to kind of uh, it's hard to describe what I'm trying to do but kind of create a, a sort of a, a texture to her face in those areas because what it's essentially what it is is that her face has been attached and sewn together so I'm trying to create that kind of distressing uh, distressed skin around those areas just giving it some depth and that skin's kind of irritated in those areas so this is just the kind of detail I'm adding then I'm going back with the white pan pastel to highlight some of the other areas around there so the skin is sort of raised around where those cuts are so that highlight kind of makes that happen gives it that dimension then I'm going in with a Faber-Castell uh, in black this is a aqua aqua rel art grip and just to some of those areas in the line uh, those cuts along her face and just in some of them I'm adding that black and that's just causing it to look more like there's more depth Then before I add the stitches, I'm adding some white and that's giving a base of, a, of like a highlight so that when I add the black line, it makes it pop a little bit. And then I go back later and I also, I'll add more white after I do another coat of Mr. Super Clear to, to make that highlight stand out more. I like to do several layers of white before I add the color and again that's adding a canvas to work on top of so the color shows up better and I'm using my Caran watercolor pencils my museum aqua rel it's they're probably my favorite watercolor pencils I use these are more like an ink tense as far as how they work um, and when I say that, I guess you just kind of have to have some experience with working with various watercolor pencils. But if uh, ink, Derwent has a a line called Ink Tense, and it's actually like water soluble ink uh, in pencil form. And I f find that when I use those along with the watercolor pencils, they don't blend as well. So I kind of use one or the other. And that's how it is with uh, the Caran d'Ache. It's very similar. It works very similar to the ink tents in that way. So I don't blend those with. I blend them only with each other, because if I blend them with the watercolor pencil, then what I find is that the watercolor pencil on top of those kind of lifts it. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, so that's the face up. I'll give her some glossed eyes and eyelashes, and stay tuned to the end for more uh, visuals of her with her full costume and face. And here I'm just adding some dots to the eyes for highlights. And there's her overall look. So please uh, don't uh, tune away. Make sure you stay to see the wonderful dolls for this collaboration. They are all so wonderful and fun and everybody just had a blast making them. There are some really talented patrons in my Patreon. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you again to all my patrons. I can't wait for the next one.
Have a wonderful day, everybody. Stay well. Talk to you soon. Bye.